Given the popularity of coffee, it is to be expected that any study that involves some sort of possible link between a cup of joe and health gets the attention of a lot of people, including me. So how about those recent headlines? Coffee with milk may have an anti-inflammatory effect, or why adding a bit of milk to your morning coffee might be good for you. Gee, I hate those weasel words like may or might. Yeah, little green aliens may land on my front lawn tomorrow, but I'm not counting on it. I'd like to see the mays, the mites, and possiblies be perched from headlines that report on scientific studies because they usually sit atop articles that can best be described in Shakespeare's immortal words, much ado about nothing. In this case, the flurry of articles was prompted by some interesting work at the University of Copenhagen. Researchers examined the reaction between polyphenols, naturally occurring compounds in a variety of foods, and proteins. Why? Because polyphenols are regarded as being beneficial in the diet, thanks to their antioxidant properties. Uh, they're capable of neutralizing free radicals and those species are implicated in some undesirable processes such as inflammation. These antioxidant effects have mostly been demonstrated in vitro, meaning in the lab, with purified polyphenols added to cultured cells, which is quite different from what happens in the body where the polyphenols can encounter all sorts of molecules, including proteins. The researchers designed an experiment, still in vitro, to see if polyphenols react in any way with proteins. They found that caffeic acid and chlorogenic acid, the two most commonly encountered polyphenols, did in fact react with cysteine, one of the component amino acids of proteins, such as ones that are present in milk. What made this uh, finding interesting was that the activity of macrophages, white blood cells that play a role in inflammation, was affected but it was affected differently by the polyphenol protein adducts than by the unattached polyphenols. As trumpeted in many reports, the production of some inflammatory cytokines was inhibited. Supposedly a good thing. When some milk-containing coffee products purchased in grocery stores, such as canned cappuccino, and yeah, there is such a thing, when these were examined, they were found to contain trace amounts of these polyphenol adducts. That is what gave rise to the headlines about adding milk to coffee producing an anti-inflammatory effect. No experiments were done to show that coffee with milk had any anti-inflammatory effect in people. But there's more. While cytokines were indeed suppressed, some other molecules produced by another pathway known by the tongue-twisting name toll-like receptor signaling pathway, well, these were enhanced. And these are pro-inflammatory. Oh, there's still more. Introducing the polyphenol protein adducts into cells reduces the cell's antioxidant capacity. Not a good thing. So what we have here is a laboratory experiment that showed some inflammatory molecules to be suppressed, some enhanced, when polyphenols hook up with proteins. There were no investigations of any effect of coffee with or without milk on the immune system in humans. And even the in vitro study suggests that the polyphenol protein adducts produced when milk is added to coffee can have both an inflammatory and an anti-inflammatory effect. And still more, the adducts were found only in trace amounts. Most definitely, the headlines about the benefits of adding milk to coffee are, what can I say, much ado about nothing. And that for today is our cup of joe, with or without milk, your choice.